Hey there, Heather Ho there. It's me, Jeff Diamond, welcoming you to another episode in this series when I talk about the hot takes of people who have done the Rick Murray situation via videos or podcasting. The first episode was all about Not a Vampire and basically why they are a muse to me. Basically, I used them as a muse to improve my Degrassi videos because obviously pre-vamp. I was kind of controversial in a sense, but I changed my tone a bit because of vamps, sayings, and all that. So now let's go on to number two. And this person basically is the type of person who, you know, it's like, okay, this guy is doing uh, watchbacks of certain Degrassi episodes, but his charm is good to some and bad to others, i.e. me. So anyway, let's talk about Unusually Eric. So what about this guy? This guy has done a lot of videos on reality shows, but his main focus is Degrassi. Mostly because he has done watchbacks of Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi Next Gen episodes. Basically, he does like one a week, and basically he talks about his reactions to it and basically talking about the subjects matter and all that. So basically, I was happy with this guy. He was doing it and all that. So I basically stick with, stuck with him for a long time. And then, of course, I, the main reason was because I wanted to see his take on season four. So... I So I basically downloaded the episodes he did about the Rick Murray situation from Time Stand Still onwards. Basically, he showed some clips. I don't know how he managed to get those clips the, from the, episode, the actual episodes without pissing off YouTube. Because I know YouTube is very pissy. That's why I couldn't do like a series that I wanted to do. So anyway, this was his take. He did like a watch through stuff, not like Vamp, who basically talked about the issues without having to say too many clips and all that. So Eric shows some clips and all that. Oh, shows clips and all that. Um, after the after Eye of the Tiger, I basically decided to unsub from him because it's like, well, my job is done. So anyway, now remember, just like Vamp. I'm gonna give you what he, what he, his his opinions, and basically, then I will talk about my reactions to his stuff. So anyway, he basically questions why Emma inserts herself into everything. Girl, to stay out of it. He talked about Raj saying that he did nothing to help the school and should have allowed Rick to leave, should have forced Rick to leave, and all that. Eric also said that. It was it was wild about how everything got built up and all that. It built up to the Rick Murray situation. He talks about Emma and Alex beefing and all that, and I think he makes a comment about Emma after she beat up Alex in season three. Eric gave his props to Ephraim Ellis, the guy who played Mr. Rick Murray. He's a little concerned about the comeback when something is serious thing. It's like, it is serious. Eric was mad at Rick's mom for not doing anything about the situation with Rick. Eric said that, the, that Rick was embarrassed by the school and Emma. He lost everything. People call him. Oh, um, and then after Rick goes after Paige, he said that people call Paige a bitch and all that. But she admits her guilt and she helps out whenever possible. Like, she knows when they didn't turn herself into things. Eric said it would be hard to for himself to forgive Spinner for his abuse of Jimmy as a friend and all that. Eric also said he was pissed off about the the fact that Emma, Sean, and Toby were going to Rick's direction and all that. It's like, how did they not turn away from the action? Eric said the warning signs were always there, but they just ignored them. Eric talked about how Hazel's character should have been better. Talks about how the fact that with Toby, it's like Rick's friend 
Rick was Toby's friend after all. And, you know, Toby had a right to be in a daze. Eric talks about how Sean couldn't express his emotions and all that. He never felt the love about his mom, from his mom, he would go on to say. Eric says Jay's an asshole. And Eric actually said that Sean drives me crazy as being jaded and all that, which was weird. Because you did it to defend your friends. No, the, the query you did it to defend your friends is that basically he's questioning why Sean would shoot Rick, but he did it to defend his friends. He cheered Raj's accent. Eric also said that Raj appeared to be very salty about the situation. He says Jay is always trash. In a lot of his playthroughs in season four, he basically says he's trash, 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 trash. Eric would talk about how Emma told Steak and Spike in Secret Part 1 that she already ate at rehearsal for Dracula and all that. And, and basically said that might have been the start of her eating disorder right there because, you know, she, she lied about eating and all that. She's a hot... Eric says she's a lying harlot putting on the act to try to fool Spike and Snake when she comes home at 2 in the morning. So Emma always hits below the belt, especially with Manny. When, you know, Emma was with Jay and all that, Emma would still be hitting below the belt. Eric talks about how Jimmy is upset that Spinner didn't visit him in the hospital. And kind of understood because, you know, seeing someone in the hospital just didn't make sense. Eric was not happy with the fact that Hazel Page didn't really visit him in the hospital, but guys, it was probably off screen. Um, Eric says that Jimmy is a good friend. Nothing harmful. Didn't do anything harmful to Spinner, unlike Spinner. And isolating d doesn't solve problems. Basically, when Spinner gets isolated after confessing to Jimmy everything. So basically, that was Eric's take on things. But here comes my take. So basically, with my take is this. So... My take with Eric is that he's, he does a lot of things different than FAMP. FAMP doesn't do, uh, FAMP does videos to deal with certain Durgassi topics. Eric doesn't really do it. He just does it as a watch group and all that, which is different, I admit. But the fact of the matter is sometimes I just didn't get this guy at all. Now, this might sound a little bit jaded and all that coming from me, and you can take it however you want it is that I tried talking to unusually Eric. Like I is like I sent him instant messages on on the Degrassi Reddit post he did. I sent him instant messages on Twitter basically saying if you need help deciphering season four, I'm here for you. I'll help you out and all that because you know I always wanted a collab. But stupidly, that never happened. Like he ignored it. He could have just said Sorry, bro, I don't think I need your help and all that. All you had to do was just recognize that. But basically, you know, as, as salty as I am at him, and I am salty and all that, and you can take it however you want it, I still got to give him some credence and all that stuff. That's why his videos are in the description below. So anyway, so he talks about how that why Emma has to insert herself into everything and basically made it his main point. Well, the fact is, and this is my take on it, the fact is that Emma was always like that. The first three seasons, she would insert herself into situations and basically, you know, sometimes it was good, but a lot of times it just blew up in her face. I mean, she inserted herself into a Spike and Snake in season two, you know, their relationship and all that, and how Emma felt embarrassed and all that. She, and then when she finds out that Spike wants to abort her new sibling, Emma says that, you know, I'm anti-abortion. And Snake, of course, Spike, of course, says, I don't want a second mistake. And Emma takes it for what it is. I mean, Spike is not really helpful in this situation. And then, you know, Emma wants to find her birth father in season three because, you know, she's going to be a big sister. Wants to find out more about her father. I mean, yeah, she went about it the wrong way. But in the end, I mean, she was justified in a sense. And Spike screwed up too. Because all Spike had to do was probably tell Emma about Shane in such a way, in a normal way. And maybe Emma just walks away from Shane. 
Simple as that because of her personality. You know, she gets mad at Manny for over-sexualizing herself. Manny calls herself hip calls Emma hypocritical, but then Manny becomes hypocritical at times. You know, Emma is upset that Manny's over-sexualizing herself. And I get it, unpopular opinion, about why, you know, Emma's a better friend to Manny than we all think she is. She's just looking out for her friends and all that. It's kind of like Maya in season 13, if you will. So, yeah, she inserts herself into these things. I mean, Eric didn't present a take about why Emma has to insert herself. Or like, why she inserted herself because of no Manny or Liberty. Bam did. But anyway, yeah. I mean, yeah. But Emma didn't insert herself too much after the Rick Burr situation. I think that just ruined her. Uh, basically, Eric says, Ravish didn't do anything to help the school and should have, well, should have made Rick leave. In the in that video, when you see my comment, you see the comment in the third episode, like uh, Mercy Street. I can't remember the person who said it, but basically that the person put a YouTube comment saying that, you know, Raj screwed up. He could have had an assembly. He could have been on the video system. He could have done whatever it took to calm the students down and all that. And I'm thinking to myself, yes, 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 that is perfect. All Radish had to do was calm the school down and basically try to explain himself. But no, he didn't explain himself. He just basically left it at such a point that the students basically went after Rick because they thought that Radish and the administration weren't doing a damn thing about it. I wish they did. I wish the teachers had more involvement. Simpson admitted his guilt. But anyway, yeah. Like, why, why was Radish so stupid? So anyway, talking about Emma and Alex beefing and all that. Yeah, about that fight in season three and all that. Makes sense. Uh, gave props to Ephraim Ellis. I give. I would give him props too. Uh, Eric said something about he was upset that Radish said come back when something is serious. Now the problem with Radish in this situation, my take is that you know, it's how Rick says it. Rick tells him that. He makes no qualms about not liking me and he won't be my friend. And he's bothering me. But he doesn't say the magic word. Like, Raj is basically made out to be a bad guy in this situation. And in part, he is. Like, even if Raj says, I don't think you're getting the gravity of the situation. And besides, I don't have time for your talk right now. Come back to me. Uh, get back to me later. Or something like that. Basically saying that I'll deal with you later, but not, but he basically just left Rick to fend for himself. I mean, it's not a stretch to say that Raj was probably tired of Rick coming to him for every little thing and all that. I think, I think in a sense that Rick was hoping Raj would help him out. After all, Raj did protect Rick in front of Emma and the click. So basically, yeah, like he always thought that Raj would be there for him. But no, yeah, this time. You know, Eric being mad at Rick's mom for not doing anything. I agree with that point. I like that point. Basically, what Eric says is that, you know, why didn't she force Rick to go to another school? Why didn't she just insert herself into the situation? Well, it's twofold. One, well, the main reason is Rick himself. I mean, like, honestly. Rick didn't tell his family anything because he was afraid that they would get involved and he would be beaten up worse or harassed worse than he was. I mean, they didn't physically beat him till the ribbon campaign was over and then they just basically was trying to psychologically bully him, but he didn't fall for it. Yeah, like Rick's mom should have seen something coming. But then again, Rick basically hit it. Like, Rick knew that he did wrong, but he also knew that if he let the students win, then he's a terrible person. I mean, Rick's mom probably got a lot of flack in the aftermath. Um, Eric said basically, just like Famp, he said that, you know, he was embarrassed by the school and Emma and lost everything. Yeah, true. Um, Eric talks about how people say Paige is a bitch, but basically she... Calms the situation down, and she, she said she admits her wrongdoings. So yeah, like you know, Paige admits when she's wrong about stuff, and she tries to fix the situation. That's good. I mean, 
in season three when Ellie starts to cut herself. Basically, she wants to help Ellie out. She's not after Ellie's co-op job. She's just basically worried about Ellie and all that. That was good for her. So anyway, yeah, that was amazing. Um, Eric says it's hard to forgive Spitty Spitter for what he did to Jamie as a friend. I agree. Like Spitter should never have done that. Spitter should never have listened to Jay. I don't know why he shows more loyalty to Jay than to Jimmy. Because, like, you know, and it was Spitter's fault why he got himself in the situation with the bathroom and all that. If Spitter hadn't been so gung-ho and basically so smug about what they did to Rick, I think that basically they could have played themselves off of this as victims in a better way. But, I mean, honestly, I mean... In a sense, I think Spitter it was mad at Jimmy for fighting him or or protecting Rick. I think so too. I think it, the hidden agenda was because with Jimmy protecting Rick, that he was upset that Jimmy switched sides and all that. And you know, Rick Eric was ticked off that Sean, Emma, and Toby walked into the same direction as Rick. Well, yeah, I mean. That's a good point. I mean, why would those guys walk into the direction? They saw the kids running one direction, and then they go towards the thing? Why would you do that? And then that's when Rick wants to kill Emma for spurning him, all that. Um, Eric talks about how Hazel's character should have been better. Yeah, I mean, in the wake of the shooting and all that, it's like, you know, they did Hazel dirty. They kind of did Hazel dirty in the first few seasons in the first place. I had a lot of people said, oh, it's probably racism and all that. It's not completely racism. It's just that they give the background characters not a lot of main plot lines and all that. Hazel was actually the first background character, or non-main character, if you will, to get a plot line, to get a main plot line on International Day in Season 2. Unfortunately, we saw Radish in a kilt-like thing, so... Hey. Um... Eric's take about Jay being an asshole and being trash and all that. Yeah, of course he's trash. I mean, like like um, Fam said, that Jay lost Spinner and a few other people. Basically, you know, Jay had to deal with the fact that he was losing people because of his stupidity. Um, you know... He cheered Radish's exit and said that Radish was salty and all that. I mean, who wouldn't be salty? Radish thought that he was doing a good job to protect the school in the aftermath, but the school board disagreed and basically made him walk the plank. It's like Radish was hoping that maybe his 20 years of service would actually get the school board to realize that, you know, you know, to be on his side. And he was upset that the school board decided to go against him. And I think he was upset that the school he felt the school board just wanted to get rid of him. And he's like, so stupid and all that. Like, who wouldn't be salty about losing your job, even though he did the best he could? And the fact of the matter is that, you know, he did deserve it. Like, if it wasn't for, like, not protecting Rick and all that, I think he also was, it was also the aftermath. I mean, the students obviously saw that coming with the aftermath. And, you know, Alex put it perfectly in drum club practice. I'm all about rebellion, but I'm not about being expelled over a stupid song. It's like, well, he off screen, he's done, he's doing what he can, but he's basically forcing students to back off and all that. All Raj had to do was figure something out about the shooting and all that. So, yeah, of course he would be salty. I mean... You know, maybe he didn't take his assignment well, and maybe he just quit. He said, I just can't do it anymore. Um, Eric talks about how possibly Emma lied about eating in season one, in episode one of Secret, and that led to her eating disorder. That possibly was. I mean, like, we didn't really see Emma, like, refuse to eat things in the first few seasons of the show, despite the fact that Mary McDonald the person who played Emma, actually did do a um, 
uh, actually had an eating disorder the first few seasons of the show. I'm surprised they didn't just replace her or basically just kill Emma off, if you will. But yeah, Emma had anything, and basically Rick was the first trigger to an eating disorder. That season five, it got better, worse, better or worse, I don't know. So anyway, Eric calling Emma a lying harlot at the end of season, episode one of, I mean, part one of Secret. That's fair enough. Like, you know, what? Like, she was not herself, and she should not have been with Jay in the first place. I mean, I know Snake wasn't fooled. I mean, two in the morning, and look at Emma's outfit. Like, if Emma wore normal clothes, I think she might have pulled it off. But she was wearing stuff that was not walk worthy. But why would she put on some nice clothes when she walked? Maybe. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. And, you know, talking about how Emma was upset, it was blowing at Manny because, you know, Manny's like, why are you with Jay? You know, he's using you to cheat on Alex. Says, well, we're having sex. Not, we're not really, ha we're not having real sex. And besides, I'm not going to get pregnant. It's like, well, he makes a point that Emma basically feels better about herself. She's the old Emma. Well, yeah, the old Emma that a lot of people probably hate. I still feel that early internet boards were basically hating on Emma. Basically, the writers had to do something about it and change Emma's character to be more likable. But that's basically in the eye of the beholder. And, of course, when he talks about how Jimmy was upset that Spinner did visit him in the hospital, well, that was warranted. I mean, you know, Spitter knew that if he visited the hospital and dealt with Jimmy, he would probably feel so guilty about putting his friend in a wheelchair and all that. But, I mean, Spitter didn't know that Rick had a gun. Who knew Rick had a gun? Nobody did, except for Emma, Sean, and Rick. I mean, Toby. Obviously, because Rick almost killed Emma. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, it's like, you know... Emma got hit below the belt and all of that. Yeah, and he talks about how his own page didn't visit. But basically, as I said earlier, I think it was just off screen. Saying that Jimmy was a good friend to Spinner, but Spinner didn't return the favor back. Absolutely. Like, Spinner was really mad at Jimmy for things. I think Spinner was jealous about Jimmy's lifestyle and how Spinner struggled for stuff, and Jimmy just got it all willy-nilly. But I think his parents basically give it to him. All of that. And isolate, and his point of isolating doesn't solve problems. That's true. Like, they isolated Rick and didn't solve the problem. They isolated Spinner after what he did to Jimmy. I mean, honestly, why would they forgive Spinner and all that? I think that's the problem. I get what um, Eric is trying to say. So anyway, that's my take on Unusually Eric. I know it's was shorter than FAMP. It wasn't on purpose. It was just the fact that I didn't get a lot of points down. Whereas I got it from FAMP's videos. I got a lot of points. And all of that. So basically I was trying to read what Eric was trying to say about this whole thing. But in the end I think he basically blamed Emma a lot. Because Emma stuck her nose in when it didn't belong. I mean domestic violence was a cause that Emma was willing to fight for. And basically you know. He's right in a sense that, you know, Emma should not have stuck her nose in. But basically, who would have helped out? And besides, her being the cause girl actually worked out for Paige, basically, because Paige could use Emma as a way to get back at the school. Who knows? And who cares? Just kidding. A lot of people do care. Anyway, so that's all I've got for this video. The third one will be coming up, and it'll be all about a podcast. So I have to make lots and lots of notes and make sure I get everything down pat. See you later.